We're, We're Batman, Batman at 89. Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Bat Minutes 89, the podcast where we analyze Tim Burton's 1989 Batman film one pendulous minute at a time. Uh, I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. Uh, I am your other host, John Parker, as always, by his side. Mm. And uh, today we have uh, not the same guest as yesterday, but we have a... Well, no, it's yesterday. It's Monday. Monday, uh, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we have another guest today. We ha- Today we are joined by a uh, friend of the podcast, Gary Gavigan. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I'm the- Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a- that's, a- that's all you've we need to You've yeah, <laughs> no, well, it, it doesn't get any better, so uh, <laughs> we might as well just just tear on from here. Um, anyway, uh, today we're talking about minute thirty-eight. Uh, and minute thirty-eight begins with um, Vicky Vale and Bruce Wayne still cuddling under the covers, no. and ends one minute later with uh, a rather despondent-looking Joker saying, "Winged freak," terrorizes. And then it cuts off. So, uh, <laughs> oh, what? What's the winged freak terrorizing? We're never yeah. going to know. Uh, well, maybe we'll find out someday, John. But it won't be this minute. So, oh, we've got to wait till Friday. I'll have, to, I'll have to come back for the next minute. But then you'll have to come back for every minute because you'll. You, it'll always end on an exciting cliffhanger. Surely, every episode. Okay, you're back to that then. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll it. But uh, anyway, yeah. So we might as well uh, jump on in here. So we start off uh, the minutes. We get the. A little bit more of, um, as we were saying yesterday, the piano rendition of the Batman theme. It goes a bit tender, because it's a nice tender moment. Oh, tender Bruce, that's why, yeah. He disappears from the bed. We get a shot of the uh, the amazing Bruce Wayne bedside clock, which is like, a Jesus Christ, this thing this looks, it just looks intensely expensive just from you know it's not one of these like modern minimalist like oh it's you know it's expensive because of what's going on on the inside this thing just looks needlessly fancy you don't know your clocks if you think that's an expensive looking (laughs) clock i watched that and i thought oh my god that's such a cheap looking clock (laughs) i was was actually thinking it's bed sheets have you seen the bed sheets well it's like well they're just like plain white bed sheets yeah like yeah Yeah. He's, he's a the man's a billionaire (laughs) <laughs> man's billionaire and that's his bed sheets and that's his are clock you, are you expecting silk sheets Egyptian silk I, was <laughs> I mean it's a fair point maybe it's just like uh, as we noted like the reason Bruce Wayne's up and about at this point is because he's uh, you know his body clock isn't used to sleeping at the, at, at, in the middle of the night so like it could be that he's just like this. This is the point where like Alfred would usually put on the nice new sheets, and then they forgot. And it's like, oh Christ, there's a girl coming over today, and uh, <laughs> now he's been left with like it's might these mightn't even be the the covers. It's gonna be like just the bare blanket underneath. And he's like, yeah, sorry, Alfred would do it, but you know he's in bed. And like... Oh well, he is a swinging bachelor. I mean, you know, he doesn't have to look after the place too well. Um, oh, and you mentioned the music again, there, Niall. Um, I thought when I was listening to it in this scene, I f- it had a kind of a sad tinge to it. Are we meant to feel sort of sorry for Bruce because he, he just can't be a normal guy? I, th- I thought it was very like soap opera y music. Like, because I've, I've watched Twin Peaks recently. Hey. It, it, it was a very like Twin Peaks y scene, especially when it cut to the, to the clock and then, then to her lying in bed. I, it was very just. Oh, yeah. It was just the very. Way it's, uh... The way it comes down really it's slowly. It's just cheese, cheesy the... soap, soap opera music, I thought it was, but... Uh, well, I don't think it's... I don't find it cheesy myself. I think it's like... I don't I don't know if it's supposed to be... You know, there there's a tinge of, uh, of like kind of tenderness and sadness to it, but it could be more like... You're saying, like, oh, yeah, Bruce can't be a normal guy. Maybe the sadness is there in the inherent, like, this is the beginning of their relationship. But it's kind of like that. This could never really go anywhere because it's... He's, you know, he's... His love is not with, you know, with this lady. It's with Lady Justice, you know, that kind of. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got gonna, love for the streets. Yeah, he's not going <laughs> to be able to settle down and just like, I'll go back to go into a normal life, no matter how hard he tries. It's like a little bit of a, as a, and then even then, like uh, when we get into, uh, towards the end, you get another little bit of the, the main Batman theme. But it has, even that has a sort of sla- sad tinge of like, do, 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 do. Like it's a real... It it doesn't sound like um as usually triumphant as it does. It has a little bit of a 
uh, a melancholy yeah, yeah. twinge to it. Yeah, but uh... well, to to back that up, um, of course, you you don't see her again. So it obviously uh, doesn't go anywhere. I mean, like, after this movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, oh, it's Piggy Bales in many minutes after this, John. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jesus. yeah, I thought I'd best clarify. In all the other movies that follow this movie, yeah, she's gone. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. When, the minute, when the minute first started, he sort of looked like... Uh, well, I originally thought, like, they've done the business, and he's just like, oh, I wish she'd gone. I just wish she would leave. He does kind of look a bit annoyed. <laughs> but then I was thinking... I've got stuff he, to do, he was, <laughs> But he looks like he's fully clothed. It's like a never nude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wondering if they had actually um, slept together. Because we saw in a previous scene, she was very, very drunk. And he wasn't that drunk. So I thought, well, maybe he's a nice guy. He's just, you know, he's just holding her in bed. But he did kiss her when she was drunk. So that was a bit out of character, I thought. Mm. Oh no, I'm I'm thinking that they definitely um they definitely did the diddly, so yeah. <laughs> I have no <laughs> oh, doubt. See, I was thinking more wholesome. I thought he was just being a gentleman. He was just letting her stay over and he was holding her. Oh yeah. no, not at all, no. I'm uh... <laughs> <laughs> not at all, no. I, I I originally thought when he was lying in bed and he looked awkward and he, uh, that's what I mean. I thought he was like, Oh, just come why don't you go home? We've done it. But then <laughs> as as sort of I don't know if there's gonna be like jumping ahead. It probably is going to be jumping ahead, but as the minute sort of went on, he just can't, he can't really sleep in a bed. He's no, no, he's, he can't, uh, can he? He's just waiting. He's waiting. That's why it cuts to the to the clock. It's just Bat- Batman's just oh Jesus, would you would you <laughs> would you just go home? Or... <laughs> go go to sleep or go home, man. <laughs> I can't really just wander over to me. <laughs> well, I like that we we get a lovely fade now showing the passage of time. And a shot of Vicky waking up uh, with quite a horrible noise in the background. Yeah, and she opens her eyes and sees Bruce across the room, swinging upside down by his feet, much like a bat. Who yeah. does thunk it? It's one of the. Um, it, it is. It's one of the bits of the film that's just like this is a bit too cheesy. Like, it's like I get the <laughs> and the, the, there's ways you can excuse it. Have been like I think you know from your first impression there. It's that. Oh, he's sleeping upside down like a bat. But we do notice though that his his arms come out. Then, like he seems to be kind of stretching. So it could be that he's like working out because again, Batman's usually out flying about the place, you know, giving criminals what for. Th- this seems like maybe he's just, he's just used to being like at this time of the day of the of the of the morning, really. That he's like, I'm usually out blood pumping, and it's just like my body's used to that. So he's just gone. The thing that he's hanging from, I don't think, like, that's a, an actual thing that people use to work out. They don't make them for bats. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, or bat men. Yeah, so they, I think that was just like quite a little for Burton to just throw in. It's like, oh, it's a workout thing, but oh, it'd be perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't considered that, to be honest. I assumed he was asleep. Um, but yeah, it's the night. Why would he be asleep at night? Yeah. That's a very good point. Because I, I did look into it, and um, some people do sleep like this. Now, and they claim, let me stress that it's claim. I don't think there's much science to this. Like, uh, Do correct me if I'm wrong, people listening. But they claim that sleeping like this can help back pain, reduce stress, improve your focus, uh, improve your core strength, so you are kind of working out, and apparently make you taller. Um, but I don't understand how any of this helps you sleep. No. Like, all those things are great, but how are you sleeping? <laughs> Plus, as well, it's just like in the morning, it's just going to be such a pain. When you wake up and it's like you can't just roll out of bed. It's like, oh, God, I have to like hoist myself up. And then come, like, I could literally clatter to the floor if I'm not careful. You know, it seems like it's. Yeah, yeah. It's, what if you forget that you were sleeping like that? You'd yeah. freak out, wouldn't you? Like, oh, God. Yeah. Plus, it's, just, it's adding more stress to your day, if anything. It's just like, oh, God, I have to worry about getting up. And then. Throughout the night, hope that I don't it doesn't snap and I fall and land on my head or something. You know. To be, f- <laughs> to be fair, if you, if you were Batman and you did that every night, you would sort of expect to wake up in the morning hanging upside down. <laughs> well, uh, can the human brain be trained to expect that? That's, well, a, that's a challenge earlier, for you. Earlier, I, I was out in the car with my wife and she parked on a hill and she put it into first gear. <laughs> so, coming back to the car, you have to make sure that you remember that you put that in first gear because. That <laughs> could be a disaster. That could be a disaster. So it's like it's like if you're doing it every night. Hashtag just saying. Yeah, I'm wondering as well though, because again, whether he's sleeping or not. So I think he is working out though. I think it's like he's probably the way his arms are going. I think he's got one of those, you know, like the two kind of pads, and then it's like a, like a little accordion thing that you have to kind of stretch oh, out. The, yeah. I don't know what you call them, but I'm thinking that's might what he, he might be having that. 
But um, I did note, though, this is the one thing. It's like, you know, Gary's saying, like, oh, he's fully clothed in the bed. And then we get him from behind here in just the pajama bottoms. But it's from behind. And I think it's like Michael Keaton's like, look, I'm not going to work out for this film, okay? Like, it's not <laughs> it's not like your modern day, like, with, you know, Chris Pratt with Star-Lord has to, you know, go from, like, chubby Andy in Parks and Rec to, like, you know, cut out a glass Chris Pratt. Because, they, you know, they went through, the, obviously, the decision of, like, this version of Bruce Wayne is that he's more dependent on gadgets and the suit to make him look intimidating. And it could just be that, like, Michael Keaton's like, well, I'm trim, but I'm not, like... I don't want to have to be, like, probably buffing up. And it might, they might be like, well, we don't want him to look too flabby or anything. From behind, when he's like that, he looks okay. So we'll leave it at he that He looks one. okay. Plus, it would have been way creepier if, like, Vicky woke up and he was, like, hanging upside down, <laughs> staring at her. And just... Oh, no. That would have been amazing, because he was just staring at her in the previous minute. Yeah. <laughs> the point about him the point of not being sleeping, when he was doing that and maybe working out... Uh, my original thing about his having cheap sheets. Mm. Well, you think he's just like I can't, I can't sleep in these. And he's just like, yeah, no, I, I, because he's the, he's the bat. He doesn't sleep in a bed. He has, That's a good point. That's just for guests. He has <laughs> shit sheets on beds because he doesn't sleep in a bed. <laughs> he's lying in that bed, looking at her, going, "Would you f- off him?" Because I, I, I can't just wander off, climb onto this hanging upside down thing to go to sleep mm. while you're there. Yeah, yeah. So he, the, yeah, the the bed sheets are cheap because he doesn't need them. He sleeps hanging upside down like a bat. Well, that's if he sleeps at all. Mm. You know, he might not get any rest. This guy. But he does. Um, so you're saying like you know he's like oh I can't do this while you're here because then he ends up going and he does it anyway. But I have to oh, say yeah, like that that's the the passage of time because he's 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 lying what waiting you know waiting for her to sleep and then it cuts to the clock. And then she wakes up, so it's hours later. He's been hanging there, having a wee snooze. Yeah. And then it, the psycho music cuts in. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Well, I, I, I love that noise, actually, because it, in any other context, I would find it irritating. But with Vicky waking up with the, with the piano tune playing and then that, that noise, it's almost kind of sweet and beautiful. I don't know. <laughs> See, like, well, you, you, say, you say psycho music, you say, oh, it's, it's sweet. I, it reminded me, it was like, oh, this is just like, it's the shrieking of a bat. I'm assuming that's what's supposed to be like the kind of, if you go into a bat cave, you hear like, meep, meep, meep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, no, well, I, when I say psycho, I, I thought, you know, when that scene, with the, hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, that, I, know, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, so I, I, I thought that was, so she wakes up to that. and you can see, oh, He's going to be stand over her just like with a butcher knife ready to go. <laughs> she, and she looks over and there's a, just a, a a man hanging up she's pretty brave that she didn't just like, run out of the room <laughs> yeah it's a bit freaky isn't it it's a bit american psycho or something the thing is like, I, I think this is a very um the, the, you know the, this again going back to like this this version of bruce wayne isn't isn't the, the, you know the, the most sociable like he's a bit of an awkward outcast he's just sort of like up in the, the mansion by himself all the time because what he's doing here to me is incredibly inconsiderate because that is, yeah. That's incredibly that that like, and she wakes up, and I imagine she's probably lying there for like the next hour, just like, oh god, when's he gonna stop this? You know, and she doesn't want to be like, uh, you brought me to your house, and uh, it's been a lovely evening, but would you shut up? You know, it's like I'm trying to sleep. I can't. Here. I can't stand it when people know you're trying to sleep. But they'll be making noise. They'll be slamming doors. They might even start talking to you. It's like I'm trying to sleep. God damn it! Leave me alone. The problem is. It was about four in the afternoon, and she's still asleep. <laughs> that's that's the real <laughs> issue. The, the, the yeah, scene when he's lying in bed, looking all a bit sort of awkward, looking at her, that's at about 12 o'clock the next day. <laughs> and he's thinking, is she ever going to go home? He's lying there going, oh, gee. So he gets up, gets on that thing, starts deliberately making the squeaking noises, thinking, this is like four o'clock she, when she originally wakes up. Well, that's like, like it's even the little thing that you might be working out with. That's you know we originally anticipated it was a little workout device. That could be an accordion. He's warming up. He's about to just like the scene cuts, but he's about to start going like rah, rah, rah. like oh yeah oh it's oh it's practice accordion at this time. Uh, and I think he, uh, you uh, so you want a taxi? Uh, what, what, what's happening? That <laughs> <laughs> there does come a point where it's like really late in the day, and you you just need your partner to like wake up. So you just stop caring after a while. You're like, I'm, I'm not going to tiptoe around anymore. I'm just going to make noise. God, I don't give a damn. I'm not, I'm not like th- this might be a spoiler that you may have to cut out, but I'm not going to say anything specific. But it, it, it explains 
the whole thing like oh would you go home explains later f- the later few minutes for me yes yeah. yes yeah but um that's one of the things like it is let's you know be spoiler for like the next minute kind of as well when there's, there's a bit more of uh, Bruce Wayne blatantly trying to get rid of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I do actually have a specific note on that because I thought the same thing. I'm glad we're all on the same page here. <laughs> uh, but we, we cut now to the Joker in Grissom's office. Uh, I love how they show that that's where we are by first focusing on that bullet hole in the window. Yeah. That, that's a pretty cool uh, way of doing it. And then, then they're pulling out. Well, I my my original, because I, I was told that was minute 38. So I, I just downloaded the film and I watched minute 38. So I I had actually had noted a point where he was like shooting over his shoulder uh, and everything, and it slightly and, different and you versions. Could, no, yeah, 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 but it I could I was thinking, are any of these other than the first one where he looked at him and shot? Are any of these going to actually land? And you can hear one go out the window, and then that was that was the one, and then yeah, I was told that uh, my scene was the, when they were lying <laughs> in bed. Well, at least you can't say though now that that's the thing we didn't touch on last minute. It's like oh, you can hear a bullet go out the window, and they fall through. Yeah. There you go. That was the thing that they did consider that. So uh, yeah, there's the bullet, and that- and I like we we see the Joker with his feet up on the table because as we've uh, already established, Napier's been pulling this crap all movie, yeah, this- putting his feet where they don't belong. Yeah, there's a man who's like, well, if you if you put him in a chair, he will recline, no matter what, no matter how expensive <laughs> the thing, no matter if oh, it's the magazine his girlfriend's reading. No. He's gonna put his feet up, and whatever is there, that's the foot. The feet, the foot, the feet are going down. All right, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> well, actually, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, but it wasn't just a magazine his girlfriend was reading. That was a girl, the magazine was she was in. That was right. Yeah, she was the yeah, front. It was her face on it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, as well, that uh, take a take a shot because we see in the in the background as well another blinking red light is an indication of foreboding danger. Like it's been. Throughout the film, Ooh, we've yeah. noted the the blinking red lights has been a thing, and uh, one of the first ones we saw was way down on street level, which is way down in the alleys of Gotham. But now we see this as the red light atop of like some kind of tower, which could be indicating that now things are bad from the top. Like things are going to get much much worse. As they, I don't, uh, yeah, the yeah. I don't want to alarm you, but there's a flashing red light in the corner of my screen right now. <gasps> oh my god, no. What's going to happen to this show? Oh, Don't say that. You curse no. the show. It, it'll turn out that you haven't got the right mic on or something. <laughs> or, that, um, or that I've been filming the whole thing and I'm lying naked here. <laughs> <laughs> this this podcast just got interesting. I like what you were saying, though, Nile, about things being bad from the top down. That, that's very interesting. Because I, I was wondering why it was shown on this building in such like at such, at such a distance. Yeah. And the only thing I could think of is maybe it's just a show... He's he's spreading the the evil from here outward. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, to the outlying Gotham. Yeah, because this is the beginning now of the. Uh, you know, we, he's taking care of Grissom. This scene sort of marks the this scene and the beginning of the next minute, or really marking the the beginning of uh, the Joker's whole plan or his whole just reign of terror that's about to burst forth. And um, I will say as well because he has. Uh, the music in the background as well. We go for something like I like, I really like this because it's kind of like this tingling, almost not wind chime, but well, not xylophone, but kind of like this real. It sounds a bit like eerie, sinister baby music. Like it's very baby. Oh god, that's yeah, a good way. What, what's it? baby music? You know, it's kind of like you know, it's real <laughs> sort of things like you play like a lullaby, kind of like ding ding, ding like that kind of thing. Well, Ga- Gary, you're about to find out what baby music is. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh listeners he has a child on the way that's <laughs> <laughs> but uh but i, was just, I think of that i was like oh that sounds like something like a yeah, lullaby and you play the, the kid but then it's like well that's because this is the infancy of the of the, the, the of oh. the joker this is the where he's gonna burst forth from this point and uh particularly you know in this in this these you know this minute and then particularly what he says at the beginning of the next minute is the real like that's the signal. Like things are about to get so much worse for Gotham. So, <laughs> and um, yeah. So um, I've noted as well. There's a thing I wanted to bring up last minute, and because uh, um, we're talking about the various things that have happened with the, the, the chemicals effects on his face and the ble- bleeds the skin, and then they've um, and they, they potentially have uh, dyed his shirt orange as well, and that that kind of stuff. But somehow, yeah. yeah. But, oh. yeah. Yep. Can I can I just say something? Because I, do you know what? When he turns up and he's wearing this mental purple suit. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I then sort of, because I've, I've not really watched the film until recently. I mean, I, when I was a kid, I watched it, but there's an earlier part in the film where he's wearing a purple suit, so I was just like, oh, yeah, actually, he that's... <laughs> yeah, we thought we thought the same thing. It's that's just, just style his, anyway. That's his style. It's, it's, it's maybe like a duller purple, but he's, yeah, the man. I think it's the, the purple suit you see him in. It's the same. It's the same one he's wearing here. It's only uh, when he goes into the chemicals, he's wearing a white shirt, and then when he comes out, it's we we were talking about last uh, the last episode. We we're like, has it been dyed orange, or did someone give him an orange shirt in the in the meantime, or what, what's happened here? You know, <laughs> it's um, it is weird though, Gary, because you, you're right. I think we've brought it up before. He. It, it becoming the Joker hasn't made him too different to how he was before, really, in this movie. <laughs> but just, a, just but, facially and hair wise, <laughs> it's much more wilder. He goes a bit more. Not... I like, I like how it's like very neatly done. Like it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just he, the colors are all in the right places. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's not very erratic and messy and. Yeah. Well, it's kind of just like the whole, the, 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 the this wound that's happened to his face that had to be surgically put up. It just looks, like as we've said already, like it just looks really tidy. It's just like, yeah, he just looks looks fine. <laughs> like, it doesn't look fine, but oh. he looks, like, symmetrical. He looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> he looks fine. <laughs> but, uh, Ooh, what I was yeah. going to say, though, is one thing. is As a man who is, um, you know, looking at Jack Nicholson, a man with a famously receded hairline. And so he's obviously got weak hair. And I'm a man... It was like, I've lost my hair. I'm looking at that now. It's been like, you went in and those chemicals just dyed your hair green. It's like, it'd, it'd fall out. Like, the hair would fall out altogether. It's just like, it's, <laughs> it's one of these things. Like, he's lucky that he kept that hair. It's just like, that's, you know, coming to get green hair all over his, sh- his shower floor the next day. You know, that kind of thing. But <laughs> That would be what would happen if uh, if he was in the sequel. He'd come back bald. <laughs> But um, but yeah, this is a little thing of like I just want to I just want to put put my aura in there and say I'm just pointing that out as a thing. If you fall into chemicals, you keep your hair. And it's pretty lucky. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish we'd I wish we'd both fallen into chemicals now. That would have saved us a lot of pain and sorrow. Uh, not together. Well, maybe together. I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, but then in terms of dialogue, he does this because he did last minute. He did the whole like, oh, as you can see, I'm a lot happier. Now he's going back again to the same, back to the well for the whole like, ah, oh, Gotham City always brings a smile to my face. It's like, yeah, because oh. you got a smile on your face, buddy. Oh, yeah. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in the in the original uh, script here, he talks about what he's going to do to the city. Um, and I just uh, I quite liked it because it fit with the the character of Jack that we know because he specifically says he's going to make it real fine and pretty. Um, and as we've already seen, he likes the finer things in life. He appreciates beauty. So it was just, it was a very good way of describing it. Although I think his version of fine and pretty isn't what we're expecting at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's like he's a, this is uh, Jack Napier, the artist. Yes, it's like his version of what he likes about art and what he finds beautiful. Yeah, for sure. It's 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 not. What many other people would, <laughs> so, but yeah, that's what they they really uh, they, they cut back in the dialogue. They just go back to the no, no, keep it simple, and um, he kind of then he notices uh, the blood strewn paper. Yeah, because he does this thing. He he goes to wipe it clean, and it made it worse. <laughs> it made it far worse. <laughs> that that's the, the, of the whole minute. That's the thing that bothered me the most. <laughs> it's just been like, troubling you. Come on, you you don't. You're trying to read it, like don't put your hand down and smear blood. He's a man who's killed many, a, many a person. <laughs> he must have known that blood is not going to help you being able to read a paper. Anyway, well, plus it's been there for a little while. I mean, we don't know how long, but presumably a few hours. It's it's stained on at this point. I don't think he's shifted. Well, that. To, do you think he's been there a few hours? I, mean, I suppose if we take it to be with. He has just killed Gris. It's in Gris's office, isn't it? But he's yeah. just killed Gris. Yeah. yeah, you think he's just been there? Well, that's, uh, yeah, it's probably uh, probably like minutes later. Well, that's the thing. Like, unless if it's hours later, because it brings up my other question: what What did he do with Grissom's body? Because is he just like is Grissom slumped on the floor now, or did he move him somewhere else, or is it just like that's <laughs> a different that's a different film now? What he did, what he did with Grissom's body. It's like, why can you think it's like a, a weekend at Grissom's? Like, it's <laughs> the Joker oh. and Bob are like going around with Grissom's corpse for the whole weekend. Uh, that Now, I want to watch that movie. Someone make that spin off, please. <laughs> Fan movies. Uh, but no, it's an interesting question because I assumed he'd been there hours just because of the Bruce and Vicky scene. But you, you're quite right, actually, because he, he yeah, does get not, a bit of smearing going on there. Yeah, yeah, it's not in sync because he does smear it somewhat. 
So it can't annoying be that late. long. Annoying. He smears it annoyingly over the text <laughs> that he could have read had he not smeared it. Annoyingly. Do you know, actually, another th- another point about that. That's front page. Like, the, the bat terrorises... But yeah. is that is that Knox? No, is, has he finally had a front page? Or who who's who's written? Yeah, that's a good. We can't quite make out who. I don't think I I, I couldn't see that it was Knox's name on it. But this is, um, I guess maybe this is like the morning edition. The Grissom got like it's probably maybe you know whatever time of the morning this is supposed. To, they they bury they bury the story about Batman, and then yeah, yeah. Access Chemicals happens. But then after that, there's like. Gordon was up and down denying that this was a, a thing that happened. It's like, oh, if there's you know, if there's no bat, then who threw this guy Napier into the acid and all that stuff. But then they ran with this on the front page. It's like, oh, it's a wing, winged winged terror, like, all that kind of stuff. And it's uh, yeah, so there still seems to be there's something that's happened in the globe where they're like, no, nope. maybe it's because Vicky Vale, like award winning, a renowned photographer, Vicky Vale, is showing up. She doesn't. Up. She but Batman hasn't told her anything about it. Like she, she just got ditched at the. Well, presumably, what I, what what I would assume has happened is that she's come to Gotham now, and it's like, oh, she's she wants to investigate Batman, and then because she's so well renowned, the paper are like, well, yeah, we'll give credence to that. Knox has somehow got his inside source saying that Batman threw Jack Napier, Jack Napier into these chemicals. And then that's now become the story. And whereas the paper previously would have been like, no, we're not running that, bury it. The, because, because, yeah, because the clout she has, it's like, well, people are into this Batman thing. She wants to investigate it. So let's jump that to page one. And I guess. Yeah, I guess, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. yeah and I guess maybe too. It's just like, well, it's this, big, you know, big shootout in the, the local chemical plant and whatnot. And it's like, well, what happened there? Bunch of the cops are saying that no one's confirming it, but a, a, sources there say it was Batman yeah. and stuff. So. Yeah, one of one of them is a is a yeah. leak. One of them's uh, tipping the paper off now. Maybe one of them went straight to Knox. Yeah. I mean, we never hear about that. We do never. We? we could have checked to see if it was uh, is source from the alley, Dwight, the uh, the shifty cop. Yeah, the, the Guardian actually went with Jack Nitbeer commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's a, apparently that's, 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 that's the story that Gordon was selling. The whole like you know, oh, who dropped him the after suicide? So like. Apparently, Gordon was telling people like, "Yep, yeah, he jumped in the car. He, he jumped himself." So. The, the, the Gordian, <laughs> the Gordian, there you go. <laughs> his personal paper that he, he prints out in his in his garage. <laughs> it's online only. <laughs> I have an objection with this headline as well. Should a newspaper really be throwing around words like "freak"? That seems quite insensitive uh, these days. Uh, well, I mean, this is the eighties. Maybe they didn't yeah, give a damn. Eighty nine. It's like, nah, you can say whatever you want. Then you know. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Just call people freaks on the front page yeah. of the paper. Yeah. Like, well, you know, if, if, if Batman shows up here to say he's not a freak, then maybe we'll have a talk with him. But in the meantime, no, we're going to call him whatever we want. So then again, this is uh, this is the era of uh, you know super freak. So maybe they mean it in that way. He's a winged freak. <laughs> well, I never know. Because we haven't seen Bruce. There could be a deleted scene of Bruce reading the paper, but like, what the hell? But <laughs> yeah, or could we have read the paper, but like, hey, Alfred. They think I'm freaky, you know. <laughs> like, I don't know what they mean, super freak, sir. No, that's what they mean, Alfred. That's what they mean. So, <laughs> <laughs> Batman's getting freaky. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, also noted as well. This is the thing you'll have to note throughout the um, the rest of the films because when he when he smears the blood, uh, he's doing it with he's doing it with gloves, <laughs> presumably new gloves that he's got because, as we noted, when he came out of the chemicals, his gloves are in tatters. Yeah, but look at the gloves, because it's it they're you they're showing these gloves in a way that indicates they're the tatty gloves from before, but they're clearly not. Because look, they're missing random fingertips and things. Um, so is he, is he meant to have just cut off random bits of the glove? Because that doesn't seem his style at yeah, this point. Yeah, look at this continuity error. But even then, it's like I don't know if it is the same gloves. Because then he we did note that um, when he was in the surgery. And we see the hand going. Th- those hands are covered in bandages as well. And you presumably, yeah, they would have, yeah. unless the gloves are like melted on to his his skin, they they, they they don't look like no, they are. But like maybe these are new gloves, but the ones that ha- the, you know, the ones that were in tatters before have melted on those, and maybe his hands are like really sensitive. That's why he has to wear gloves now. They might have been from Oxfam. You bought like second hand, uh, yeah. secondhand gloves. <laughs> Get them cheap, yeah. But well, presumably he just stole them from at uh, the, the surgeon when he was there. He's like, I'm taking your gloves as well. <laughs> well, actually, come to think of it, I've thought of something. You know, when he leaves the surgery, remember we were talking about there was a scene in the script 
where he bumps into like some punks or something oh, on yeah, the street. That's right, yeah. Maybe he was originally supposed to have got them from them. Uh, I don't think of those ones, though. It was more like he was just in passing. I don't think there was any... He had much of an interaction with them. It wasn't like the Terminator or anything, where it's just like... Uh, that's what I was picturing. <laughs> I think I just want to watch the Terminator. <laughs> that's just a day in the life of John Parker, that, though, to be fair. <laughs> but uh... Yeah, yeah. I could watch the Terminator every day. Uh, but all we see, though, as well... It definitely confirming here that they are very green fingernails because we weren't 100% sure on the shade. Not the most exciting topic, but they're very, very lime green. Uh, and it just looks like nail polish, that. That's not... Uh, it's supposed to have been... We came to this conclusion sort of bleached a weird colour by the chemicals because it's like hair. But it's, uh, it's a very bright, different green to... Yeah, it could be that in all those hours he's just been knocking about Grissom's. He's just been like... He went over and found Alicia's nail polish, and he's just been sitting, <laughs> trying to make, get himself ready for his big night. You know, his big night in the town. Where he's just like, "Hey, I'm, I'm a new well, man," you know. <laughs> but, well, Alicia doesn't seem like the kind of woman to be wearing the lime green. She's more of a a dark red lady. Yeah, <laughs> but I think she's just like you know, she's the kept mob woman. So like she has everything. She has the things she doesn't need. There's just everything's to hand, you know. But, <laughs> yeah. but. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much the end of the game. Uh, after the word terrorizes as the um, the last of the actual action. But I suppose it's, it's, it's any, as good an opportunity as any now, considering as we've had to dodge around the freaking Joker the whole podcast. We can actually do the preliminary Joker facts. Like, where where does this character come oh, from? Yeah. So, uh, I'm not going to like offload them all in one go, because you can keep this going for the whole freaking podcast. But um, the character originally uh, appeared in April 25th, 1940, in Batman issue number one. So, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's you know, properly back, back in the day. This guy was the the original Batman villain. Um, and he uh, notably in that first in that first issue, he actually goes and shoots a gangster who would threaten his life, much like Carl Grissom, although that character was called yeah. Brute Nelson. Which is uh, <laughs> that is a comic book name. The actual origin of the the character is that uh, it seems to be one of these things that's up in the air because we've got three different stories. It's credited to Bob Kane, Bill Finger, and a fellow called Jerry Robinson, uh, and they've all got their their own little takes on exactly what uh, what happened. Because uh, Jerry Robinson apparently uh, says that. He was interested in doing like a proper arch nemesis character when he was hired in to um to you know DC Comics, and um that uh, he said he originally brought like a nineteen forty or in uh, nineteen forty he made like a, a sketch of a playing card, which was the yeah. where the character's concept came from, and um you know he'd just been working with him for like a year. He was hired in. Uh, he was hired at 17 years old in 1939. Yeah, so like back then you started, you started young. But uh, um, now you're trying to get a job for like 20 years. <laughs> but um, but yeah, and then uh, he apparently he's flat out, he's he, he, his statement is that um, uh, said that like in that first meeting when I showed them that sketch of the the Joker, Bill said it reminded him of Conrad Veet in The Man Who Laughs, which was the yeah. which is what they say is the other inspiration behind the character and who Gaz brought up in those minutes way way back when um, um and uh it says like that was the first mention of it uh, he can be credited to Bob him he can be credited and Bob himself we all played a role in it uh, the concept was mine this is Jerry Robinson said this uh, Bill finished that first script from my outline of the persona and watch it happen in the story he wrote that script so he was really a co-creator and Bob and I did the visuals so Bob was also well, that's, that's fair, I suppose. He's giving everyone credit. Finally then, Bob Kane himself then said, uh, Bill Finger and I created the Joker. Bill was the writer. Jerry <laughs> Robinson came to me with a playing card of the Joker. That's the way I sum it up. The Joker, lo he looks like Comrade Veep, you know, the actor from The Man Who Laughs. Uh, Bill Finger had a book with a photograph of Comrade Veep, and I showed it to, and he showed it to me, said, here's the Joker. Jerry Robinson had, had absolutely nothing to do with it. But he'll always say that he oh. uh, when, that he created it until he dies. He brought in a playing card, which we used for a couple of issues for him, uh, and to be to be like a Joker device. But that's it. And then we got another story from uh, from oh, Bill God. Finger, 
saying, uh, I got a call from Bob Kane. He said uh, he had a new villain. When we arrived, he was holding a playing card. Apparently, Jerry Robinson or Bob, I don't recall who, looked at the card and said they had an idea for the character. Bob made a rough sketch of it. At first, it didn't look much like the Joker. It looked more like a clown. And then I remembered that uh, Grosset and Dunlap formerly issued very cheap editions of classics by Alexandre Dumas and Victor Hugo. The volume I had was The Man Who Laughs. uh, And his face had been operated uh, to be like a permanent grin. And then apparently, they just thought, that looks really weird. Let's make a character out of that. And it just seems to be like, that's the whole thing has never been resolved and the the actual who came up with the joker and how seems to be an absolute you know complete cluster cuss basically of just like i was listening to all of this rubbish that you were saying now the whole time just biting my lip it was me <laughs> it's just as believable as what these guys are coming out with i mean no it's more believable because it's true ask my cat how many t- how many times heard this podcast has anybody said that gary gavin can't be trusted well, that's true enough uh do you have a favorite Batman movie, or have you got any like memories of this movie? Any uh, um, anything to say about it? Well, I I remember this as being a great Batman film, and then I watched it. Oh. <laughs> hey, oh. to... <laughs> no, See, it, 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 but it, because it, it was when I was a kid when I last seen it. When I watched it recently, I can't believe how short it is. Well, it was what like another these like the Chris Nolan near three hour just like. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, not, not, but not, not comparing it to Batman films, but just comparing it to films nowadays. It's just, it, it, it was so short. And <laughs> there, I know this will be covered in earlier minutes, but like when you first see the Batman fighting people, where he just like sort of stands there and then lifts his arm, <laughs> and then you know, he can't like, move. He'll, yeah. he'll catch somebody in the face by just lifting <laughs> his arm, and then and then he'll walk over somewhere. And I was just thinking, it's like this is. I shouldn't really say this on this podcast, but like, he's so unimpressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of get what you mean. I mean, yeah, but it, it, it was the special effects and everything. Yeah, it 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 it, it actually made me think just how old the film is because I did I didn't think about how old it is until I watched it. And did it make you uh, ponder life and death and your own it did. your own it, mortality? You know what? It did. When it, you know when the um, that scene at the start when there's the that family with the kid. Yeah. And then I was thinking, that kid's older than me. <laughs> that upset you. Yeah, it upset me. It was like, because I was thinking, like, the, the mom and dad are probably already dead. The, the kid the kid is, he's probably dead as well, but through drugs. <laughs> yeah. And then... <laughs> Just because he's a child actor. Are you talking about died. the actor or are you talking about, like, that kid is, like, out of the sheer depression of what happened to his dad? Well, either, <laughs> either way, like, both... Yeah. <laughs> Well, I suppose living in Gotham, you probably would turn to drugs, yeah. The actor and the character are both dead from drugs. Oh, it, yeah, we had nothing around to, to disprove that, so yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, good film. Definitely a good film. It's like, oh, I hated every goddamn second of other, it. Other than that. <laughs> no, no, it, 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 it just surprised me how old it was. I'd, because I, in my head, I remember it as being this masterpiece. You know, from when I was younger, and not saying that it's it not. Is. It's not saying that it is. No, yeah, it is. It is. But when I watched it then, comparing it to watching it now, do you know what I mean? It, it, yeah, yeah. It's it's so different. But yeah. Well, let me tell you as well. It it doesn't seem so short when you uh, analyze it minute by minute. So that's a that's a tip for you. Yeah, I'll 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 try and look out for somebody that's going to do that. <laughs> Only crazy, deranged people would even attempt it. So, um, yeah. Anywho, that's uh, that's all I've got for this for this minute. So if you want to, anything else? Got anyone? For, anyone got anything else for this? Uh... No, I, I ran out of stuff to talk about very early on. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way these shows go. That's what we want. That's good. Oh, just the bed sheets <laughs> thing that that annoyed me. <laughs> This why he didn't have better uh, sheets. No, actually, the, thing, the it, thing that drove me most was um, smearing that over the newspaper. That really got on my nerves. Bed, bed sheets and the newspaper were the two uh, main things of the episode, and I did not expect it to go that way. I'll be but I'm glad it did. Um, so yes, that just about uh, that wraps it up for minute thirty eight here on Bat Minute eighty nine. Well, thank, thanks so, for having me on, even though I don't really know much about the film, but. Hey, no, that that's fine. We want we want a mixture of guests with different ideas and interpretations and experience with the movie. Uh, have you got anything you'd like to plug? Is there anything anywhere people can get in touch with you if they want to chat to you? Yeah, I've got actually a mail escort uh, business going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. No. So hire Gary. <laughs> <laughs> rent, rent Gary. 
<laughs> rent is that the official term? <laughs> I'm a rent man. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, uh, no, uh, no. Well, actually, yeah, the, the Sand Cuffer project for National Museums Liverpool. Why don't you come on down to the docks and have a look into it? Yeah, yeah, check that out, everyone. And there's also, of course, as we constantly mention in the Listener Society, the Joker Boat next door. So you can go to this and then go and see the Joker Boat, if it's still there. Yeah, so that, that is the tie, that's a, that's a tie-in to the... And the, the, the Slavery Museum, it, it, which is down by there, I guess, that's like the, all these people that work for the Joker. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they're getting adequately paid, to be honest. So I'm saying. I, think, I think they're working for, through fear. <laughs> Well, make sure to check those out. And uh, another thing you should check out, of course, is that Minute 89, because we'll be back again on Friday to round up the week with Minute 39. See you then. Next time, evasive manoeuvres. As a newly christened clownish criminal considers blowing his load, will an uncaped crusader cop to the consequences of being a cunning linguist? Find out Friday. Same bat pod. Different bat minutes.